y'all, something that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to cystic fibrosis is how many medical devices we use on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of people think about the medications, how we take the pills, the breathing treatment, like actual medication-wise, but we don't think about the actual devices themselves that we use. And today I wanted to just kind of focus on and show all the different devices that I personally have to help me manage my cystic fibrosis. None of this is going to be actual medication. These are all just different devices that are used to either help give the medication or something that can just be used alongside medication to help manage cystic fibrosis. I'll show y'all some of the devices. I'm gonna go ahead and show the ones that are actually on my body at all times. So first off with the most obvious one, my porta -cat. I have a power port placed right here, which is how I get my IV antibiotics. I had my first port cuff placed when I was 17, and this is not the original one. My first one was actually put in the, directly in the center of my chest, and it only lasted about six months because it was put in a very awkward place, and it got pushed behind muscle, and it just, just stopped working. It was extremely painful, so we got it replaced and put up here, and this baby has been working ever since I was 18. So it's been great. When I started getting them, I didn't really have a choice. Pick lines stopped being able to function on me because both my arms were just completely done up with scar tissue. So in order for me to get any kind of IV antibiotics, I had no choice but to get a port. But it has been great, love it. Would not, can't like, I could not recommend them more over a pick line, 100%. Next is my, da -da -da, my feeding tube, my peg tube, my G-tube, whatever you want to call it. I got this baby just this past year, back in November, I believe, because I lost a bunch of weight about a year ago. I lost probably close to 20 pounds or more and was unable to get my weight back up. So when doing so, my lung function also started tanking. I started getting oxygen at the same time. And since I couldn't get my weight back up on my own, they figured that getting a feeding tube would be my best option to help me just get extra nutrients either while I'm sleeping or while I'm doing other things. I'm still eating, I'm still eating a lot, but doing this on top of it. And it's been a touch or go, good days, bad days type thing. But as of right now, me and my feeding tube are getting along really great and I'm a big fan. Some people love it from the get-go. Others like me have a hard time adjusting but we're finally getting there. We're finally, finally getting there. And I am noticing a difference whenever I use it regularly, which I am now able to start doing. <laughs> Lastly on my body is going to be my Freestyle Libre, which is my blood sugar glucose monitor. Essentially, I just put this sucker on the back of my arms, switch them out every two weeks, and it tracks my blood sugar for me. I don't have to prick my fingers. There is an app on my phone that is linked with it and I basically just scan my phone, the camera of it over here on the little sensor, and it'll pop up a graph of my blood sugar showing where I'm at right now, where I've been for the past X amount of hours, and it'll show the chart, and it'll show if I'm spiking high, dropping low, staying steady, gradually increasing, gradually decreasing, things like that, so I can just kind of better watch my blood sugar and know, okay, why am I feeling this way? How, why am I not just it gives you better control all around control over your blood sugars and when it comes to airway clearance which is essentially the physiotherapy of breaking up the mucus in our lungs to where we're able to bring it up and cough it up and cough it out of our lungs so our airways can become more clear what most people in America think of is this machine right here called the vest which you essentially put on an actual vest you can put on a full body vest or like I'm using right now since my port's access, a wrap vest, and you plug the tubes into it, you turn it on, there's different settings, you can change it from the different pressure to the different speed, different time, and it just percusses your vet, or your chest walls, so it's just, I don't wanna use the word vibrating, but essentially it's shaking you and vibrating you until you're able to cough up the mucus. Today they also have portable vests. They have the Monarch and the Aflo vest. I do not have either. 
I have tried out the Monarch vest in clinic, but I found it to be too heavy and too uncomfortable. It really hurt when I did it. So I decided I just didn't want to fool with it. It seemed like I would, it wouldn't encourage me to do my vest more because it was extremely, extremely uncomfortable. And I'm extremely, extremely weak. And I was having a hard time just lifting to put it on when I'm used to something extremely lightweight and easy to use. People say it gets easier with time, but I just decided it's not, I don't think it's meant for me right now. Maybe one day down the road, I'll try it again. But right now I'm okay not having one. But there are other forms of airway clearance that are more um, interactive, I guess you could say. The first one that I've always had is an acapella. I've also heard it called a flutter, so I'm not sure if this is an acapella or a flutter, or if the terms are used interchangeably. But essentially, you have this, I think it's a kind of pep device. I think is the, the kind of classification that these next two are. I could be very wrong, and correct me if I'm wrong, but essentially you have settings on here and it makes it to where it is either harder or easier and you blow into it and it'll vibrate your chest wall or your chest, again, forcing you to cough and it loosens up the mucus. Personally, I think this works better than the best. It, I tend to opt for the best because the best is a much easier, way to do things. This is exhausting. I have to do three rounds of 10 with huff coughs in between and it takes me a lot longer to get through it because it is interactive. I have to put forth a lot more energy in doing this, but I do find it is more productive, but it is exhausting. So I tend to only use it when I feel plugs right here that I'm not able to get up on my own. And then I do a few rounds of it and I'm good to go. Another one that I've recently been given, this is actually my second one get it given this, second time given this, and this is called an Aerobica. It's a similar idea, but this one you can actually put your nebulizer onto it. So you could plug it in right here, and you could do your airway clearance while you're doing your nebulizer. Again, very similar idea. You have different settings, you blow into it, it flutters. This one I don't think is as effective as this one. Everyone is different. Personally, I do not find this one to be as aggressive. So, but it is cool that you're able to do it with your nebulizer. My hospital this past time started using, handing these out instead of these. So I don't know what the logic is behind it, but personally, I've been using it, but I'm not the biggest fan. What everyone seems to think of when they think of nebulizers is just the standard nebulizer compressor, compressor, compression, however you want to say it, machine. This is the one that I currently have. It's from Perry. I've gone through quite a few in my years. This one actually just became in my possession this past spring after my other one died. And you know what? It's durable, it'll last for years, it does the job, they're dependable, they're not very heavy. They get the job done. I mean, it's just very standard. You plug it in, you attach your nebulizer head, you turn it on, and it goes. But, Sometimes you want to be able to be on the go. You don't want to be held down. And something that I'm notorious for doing is doing tr breathing treatments on the go because I will do my vest while I'm like doing my makeup or my hair. But if I'm doing my makeup, I can't have my nebulizer in my mouth. I can't do it all. So then I'll use a portable nebulizer. The first portable nebulizer I ever had was this. It is the Harry Trek. This baby is known for being extremely slow and running out of battery in no time. It, you can barely get through a treatment or two before the battery dies. So it's not very dependable and it's not, I wouldn't really suggest it to be honest, but back in today day, it was the only option available. And I've had it since probably 2008-ish. 
Well, I've had it for 11 years and it's still running. It still works. But I just, it's never been the greatest. My baby, my prized, prized possession, my Philips Inospire Go. She is my new portable nebulizer. She is beautiful. She is lightweight. She never runs out of battery. And she's so quiet and she's so quick. I cannot say enough great things about her. She is not covered by insurance, so I paid out of pocket for it. It wasn't very expensive, but still it was out of pocket compared to like a traditional nebulizer where it's covered by your insurance. But she has made my life a dream come true. I can get through all my, I can get through a hypertonic treatment and a palmazine treatment in less than 10 minutes easily with her. The hardest thing is that it goes so fast where it makes hypertonic almost unbearable to do. So I have to take multiple breaks, but she's beautiful, she's great, she's speedy, she's quiet. I cannot say enough great things about her. And the last nebulizer machine that I have, I actually don't have to use anymore. And it is the Perry eBase with Altera eBase. I don't know how you want, how people want to call it. But essentially, it was another kind of portable one, but, and it was very quick. It was very difficult to clean, but very quick. However, the medication that I used it for, which is K-Stead, an inhaled antibiotic, I no longer use. They switched me to two different, or to a different antibiotic instead. Before I would switch, do one month K-Stead, one month Clistin. Now I switch to one month Clistin, one month Toby. So I no longer have a use for it. But again, it was very quick. Very easy, just a pain in the butt to clean the nebulizer part for. So I showed you all my feeding tube earlier, but this is actually my pump. It's a Kangaroo Joey pump, which I believe is the only pump that I know of that is out there. And it is what does my feeding tubes for me. I get a bag like this, this one's dirty, pay no mind. And I just put my two feet in here. I run the tubing through the top, as so. Plug in my settings, attach the bottom part to my actual tube in my stomach, and we set the alarm and we just go. As some of y'all know, I am someone who requires supplemental oxygen on a nightly basis, and then occasionally when I'm not feeling as great, on a daily, like day, during the daytime, essentially. So when I'm at home, I use an oxygen concentrator, which is a machine that plugs into the wall and it creates its own oxygen. And it basically just has its own tubing. So it just gives me my oxygen through that, which is this machine right here. It is very loud. And all that but it works great it's actually to the point now where I can't sleep without it and luckily the tubing is so long for it where I keep it upstairs next to my bed because I use it every night but it reaches all the way downstairs to my front door and out the back door so I can get everywhere in my house with it because I have such long extension oxygen tubing however when I go out some people have uh, portable oxygen concentrators However, I do not. Um, my insurance wouldn't, won't pay for it, so I would have to pay out of pocket for it, and they're kind of pricey. So until I'm requiring portable oxygen, like when I'm out and about all the time, I don't think I'm going to take the plunge in purchasing my own. Until then, I will just use portable oxygen tanks, which I will go and show y'all what those look like now. Here is where we keep most of my oxygen tanks. We're in the garage right now, and I keep most of them in here. Here is for my longer, for the larger tanks, I use this to pull them around with. But for the small ones, I have bags in my car that I use to just carry them over my shoulder with, and that's what I normally just use. I only use the big ones as a backup. I usually keep a tank in my car with me and bring one with me just in case, but I'm not constantly using it. So instead, 
I just use these tanks. I have a company that I get them from and once a month they will bring them out to me or I can go anytime and get them replaced, which I tend to just take myself because it's right across the street from my mom's work. It's right down the road from where my parents live. So I'll just make it an easy peasy little drive down to go visit them and then get them switched out at the same time. The people who work there are really great and then I'm able to tell them exactly what kinds I want, what sizes I want, how many of what I want and I can tend to get some free supplies out of it too because they know me there and I don't know, it's just what works best for me. But I just wanted to thank y'all for watching and just kind of learning a little bit more about what medical devices are used in the care of cystic fibrosis. Most people don't really think about it or don't know as much about it. They may know about the breathing treatments and the vest, but they won't know about all the other options there are out there. You can tell that I'm still sick because I keep getting out of breath. But uh, yeah guys, so thanks for watching and I will see y'all soon. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, y'all.